Hello, welcome to the Google Games Developer Summit. And today I will be talking a bit about the practical considerations for developing games for foldable devices. My name is Chris Foley. I'm a developer relations engineer with the Android Games Developer Relations team. And before we get started, let me talk a little bit about myself. I've been in the game industry for quite a while, over 20 years now. I started out in console development, and then I moved on to P making PC games, and then eventually mobile development. And I have been working with mobile developers for about the last 10 years or so. Today, I wanted to talk to you about folding phones. Now, if you're a game developer, you've probably seen folding phones out there and said, that's pretty neat. But I think there's a lot of opportunities offered by folding phones that I think would be very interesting to a game developer. So let's go into that a bit. First of all, what are foldable devices? If you haven't paid attention to them, well, devices with folding screens first arrived on the market in 2018. There was the Royal FlexPi, I think was the name of the device. The proposition is simple, more screen real estate in the same size device that you can just stick in your pocket. At first, there were just a few devices and they were promising, but they were still just the initial attempt. But these days, we're beginning to see more and more manufacturers come out with devices using this form factor. What can foldable phones do? Why are they becoming more popular? So the obvious thing is that they have two different types of displays. And the biggest one is the immersive, the large display, versus an immediate, a small screen display that comes right out of your pocket and is immediately available. You can have shifting displays on the fly so that you have, say, a game on one display, you close it, it pops up on the other display or it moves between displays. All that tech is technically within what foldables can do. You can have multiple combinations of displays, maybe all going at the same time. Foldable displays, since you have that large real estate, also give you the opportunity to do for things like multitasking, for folded states, if, such as having the open, closed, or even half open states, as you can see here on the right, or split screens, where you have one app on one side and one app doing on the other side. And from the app's point of view, it just looks like another display. For this talk today, I want to talk about game design considerations. And here is why foldables are interesting for game developers. And in my mind, it's because they open up new opportunities for game design for developers to take advantage of. Now, I mentioned before that I worked in the console space for a long time. Now, in consoles, new generations of devices were always really exciting. And really, these new generations for consoles were what drove the industry forward at the time. And a big reason for that was because of new hardware capabilities. There was the addition of internet capability at the time. Of course, every generation comes with better graphics, with more capable uh, processors. You also had the addition of controller feedback, so you could actually get feedback and feel something if you actually did something in the game. Uh, and then microphones and headsets, of course, also brought in a whole new aspect of gaming. And these were all ways that let game developers create ways for players to play games that they had never done before. Let me bring back to folding phones. Now, I mentioned before that the most obvious advantage that folding devices have, of course, is the ability for a multiple size of, of displays for the players to use. So here's an example with screenshots from a game, and I will show a demo in a, in a bit, but here's some screenshots. On the left, you have a large immersive display. You can see it's, it's panoramic. It's very pretty. I have a nice cityscape. It give, you, gives you full access to the screen. I think the screen is about 2,200 pixels on a side here, it's really pretty. And it really gives you a lot of real estate for a developer to really explore with. And it's here, I am showing the whole game. Now on the right side is the same game, but I have it here running on the folded aspect of the phone, which is approximately about half the size, as you can see on one dimension, the other dimension is roughly the same length. And you can see it's the same game. And in this one was what I call more immediate. And maybe while the tablet was, is better if you're on a plane or if you're on a chair, you're sitting where you have both hands where you can relax, a more the more immediate, the folded version is better, say you only have one available, say you have one hand on a strap on the subway, or say you just wanna use one hand on your phone or you're on the go, you're moving around, you don't wanna have this giant, uh, you know, the larger device out. 
So that's the opportunity here. Now, as you can see in my screenshots here, we're going to get into the second consideration. So if you see it for using a game with one hand, you notice that my folding one, the here on the right, I have these UI elements, these little arrows. And I think you can barely, you, maybe you can't even see them there. And so I put the, the arrows on either side of the screen, which is not a good decision if I wanted to use this with one hand. So this will get into a little bit later about the types of considerations that you need to make. Another opportunity for game developers for using foldable phones are new types of player engagement. So for example, on the left, here's a high score board in my game. And you know, high score boards are very popular with players. They drive engagement. People like to compete for them. They're very interesting. The problem is here that on this display with a folding phone, you, you just you close the phone and that goes away. But you now have a second screen available on the front. So here's the opportunity. When the player folds the device and the main screen goes away, you could show the same game on the front of the screen and maybe even have it in a different, in a different manner. For example, suppose you had a racing game on the large screen, then you fold it and up comes a high score screen on the outside so that a player can pull it out of their phone and immediately see who is on the high score. Maybe there's a forum so they could have chat, they can have messages from their game. So, you know, the point of this is that a folding device adds the number of touch points that the player has with your game. And every touch point that the player has with your game increases the likelihood that they will continue to play. So you can take advantage of that and come up with even more ideas. What would you want to have a player look at your game if they could just take it out of, out of the phone, different from just playing the game normally? And I think, you know, putting some thought into that might come up with some neat ideas. Another way that folding phones can really advantage the game developer are new types of gameplay. So instead of just adapting your existing games or gameplay to a new format and figure out how you can get it to try a new screen. How about come up with a completely new type of game? And I just mocked up the idea here, but the minute I saw a phone in the half folded position, you know, this one where the phone is in half folded in there, I immediately thought that this would be perfect for some sort of head to head play. If you can think back to the original Battleship game where you'd have two players, you know, and they have the folded device and the, you know, folded thing and they'd be marching who, you know, you suck my Battleship. It would be the same type of thing here. If here, would I would have a head-to-head -head racing game. Uh, you could have your UI split up to have, say, the top part of the phone be a be the game and the bottom part be your controls. Like imagine my racing game here, if I had say racing controls down at the bottom, or if it was an arcade game, I could put the joystick down at the, uh, on the bottom half of the screen. And it would be almost a way of turning a the flat device and really turning into more of an arcade type of machine. So there's some new ideas, you know, for a game developer on what you could do with this, but what's it take? What does it take for a game to support folding screens? There's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that folding phones are represented by the OS as a configuration change. And configuration changes are really nothing new to an Android developer. In fact, there's a very familiar configuration change, which is switching between landscape and portrait. Now, the bad news is that your game probably doesn't support it yet. So the reason why is that most game engines do not support configuration changes such as switching between landscape and portrait out of the box. And most game developers haven't really been requiring that because it does incur extra overhead to support the two aspect ratios. Uh, there are some extra code changes that we're getting into, but you'll see that most games do not support it because when you try it on a folding device today, when you change the display, the phone might ask you if you want to restart as that's the typical behavior when a con configuration change is not supported. So how do you add support? Well, there are four easy steps for adding foldable support to your game. The first is to update your Android manifest to support configuration changes. The second part is to handle those configuration changes in code. Now, as I mentioned before, most game engines will not support configuration changes right out of the box. It's not difficult. You usually just need to add a module or something, or maybe write a wrapper around some of the relevant Android code, but it is something that you may have to add. The third part is to save your UI state. Now, this isn't strictly necessary, but it's a best practice. 
because terrain configuration change, even going from landscape to, to folding or, or landscape to portrait or switching between screens on your phone, there could always be something wrong. Maybe the phone restarts, maybe the app you know, crashes. Uh, there could be something that goes on. So it's just best if your UI is something that it's in a state that would need to be saved. You should save your UI state before making the configuration change. And the last part, and I threw this here at the end because this is the most important, although in reality, it's also the most time intensive task. And that is to make the game resizable, adding a dynamic and resizable UI. So let me talk a little bit about what this looks like in code. So the first step was to support configuration changes in your manifest. Now, on here, I have a little sample. This is actually from the, the game I put together. Um, it's very simple. You've seen this before. Uh, because by default, Android destroys and restarts the activity on a configuration change. So you want to declare the activity element in your manifest representing the configuration change you want to support to prevent that restart. And the most commonly used values that you'll see in this will be orientation, which prevents a restart on an orientation change from landscape to portrait. Screen size, which does the same, but for uh, APIs larger than 13 or post Android 3.2. Screen layout, which is a configuration change triggered by foldable phones and Chromebooks. And then another commonly used one, although I don't use it here, is keyboard hidden for keyboard availability changes. For my game, I wasn't using the keyboard. It's not something I really wanted to paint, so I don't pay attention to it. And let me now show you what I'm talking about. So here is my game. I put together it's a little racing game. You can see here we are moving into the into the distance is city. I have a couple UI elements here, so I have these arrows that you can do to, to drive left or right, um, you know, like that. And after adding some configuration changes into the manifest, it made it so that I can take my game, which is here running on the larger screen, I fold it, and voila, it's now playing on the secondary screen. Now you will notice one thing though which is that the aspect ratios of these two screens are not, are not the same. And Godot, which is the engine I was using here, is able to handle that no problem at scaling the, the viewport you know, appropriately for the right size, but that means my aspect ratios are not right. And this gets into what is kind of the big change that you need to make, which is supporting different screen sizes, supporting different aspect ratios. To support, really support foldables. You need to be able to support your multiple screen sizes. In your activity, you need to tell the uh, Android that it's a resizable activity so you can support multi-window mode. There are also some extra flags that you can add for declaring your maximum and minimum aspect ratio, which may be useful. Say that you're happy to have the game modify its UI, but maybe not infinitely so. So for example, you could set your maximum aspect ratio to one to force portrait mode in your game, even if they have, say, a widescreen display, if your game is, has been optimized for portrait mode. So it's you know a little tip there. Now, I made some changes into my game as well. Now, one further thing you need to do to support foldable devices is supporting the configuration changes in code. And as I mentioned earlier, you can save and restore game states, which is best practices. Supporting the layout changes as dimension changes, though, is the major thing that you need to do here. And other UI changes as well. And really dynamically changing your UI or supporting different layouts is something that you need to put a lot of design effort into. And this is really where I spend a lot of time on my game. So one thing that I do on my game is I actually change, I actually check the screen size with every single frame. So instead of setting up a listener to check for explicit configuration changes, I actually just do it on the fly. And here I have an example here from my code showing an example of dynamic scaling orientation. Every frame, my code, I look at the display width and height that it's currently rendering to. If it's larger than 0 0.6, you know, for width divided by height, then I declare that to be landscape orientation. And I have to scale some parts of my UI differently. Now in portrait orientation, you see I have, uh, if, it's, if it's in portrait mode, then I scale by a different amount, which I've decided to be is best for a portrait uh, type of display. Show a little bit of, about what that looks like here. Here again, another version of the game. I changed the car to blue here. And once again, there it is on the main screen. And then this time I close it. Now here, you'll notice that 
I've changed, I've made some changes to my aspect ratios here. The car on the bottom, particularly, you'll see is, well, it looks a lot smaller, but it's actually now the right aspect ratio. It doesn't look like a, a giant squished blob. Uh, I've changed some of the aspect ratios on there. So this was all done on the fly in Vlachite, and I can even open it up and oops, flip it around. And there we are back to the original game. So we can flip back and forth because I'm just supporting all this and dynamically changing how I render, and how I scale my UI elements on the fly. Now, the last thing that I want to do was to take my game and not just, you know, not just support two screens, but I was unhappy about this. So in fact, I also added the ability and Godot made this really easy. And as I said, different engines handle this differently. Godot actually handles the landscape portrait change very easily. And so as a result, I took my game, I made a third version that supports all everything that could possibly do to go with the screen. And here we are back to the red car and I show that we, change. We have the aspect ratios. I think I made the car a little bit bigger in this one to make it a little bit more visible, but even better, it now supports even portrait mode on the tiny display. Now you notice here, I've dynamically resized all my UI elements. The arrows on the left are now much bigger. The car is much larger. You can see the scaling of the background has changed a little bit. I actually put some thought into it so that when we are in portrait mode, I actually hide a lot of the grass on either side to make sure that you can actually see more of what I see is the gameplay in this, you know, which is the car in the middle of it. And so as you can see, I flip her around and support all sorts of different aspect ratios. In conclusion, talking a little bit about games on foldable devices, what is it that you need to do to support them? And Foldable devices offer the opportunity for new games and gameplay. And for a game developer, it's kind of an brand new open field to try out new designs. Uh, support for folding devices is actually quite easy to, uh, to add to your game. It may be not provided by default. You might have to add a little bit of code, but it's actually not very difficult. Flexible UIs and layouts require design and tech. And those can be more effort, and especially when you're, if you're working on your tools for your artists or coming up with new ways to automatically lay out or to build the game, uh, build it or integrate new assets. But that technology can be reused, which will be important as we move into the future where there are more foldable devices, where mobile phones will probably have more and more displays. There are other, defi other devices out there that are maybe of different, uh, different form factors that we have not seen yet. And this flexible technology will definitely have benefits. And then lastly, again, look at foldables as the chance to explore games on a brand new form factor, brand new hardware, uh, and really being maybe be the first one to invent something brand new for the world of games. For more information, you can go to the link here to learn about games on foldables. I hope you enjoy the rest of the GDS conference. Again, my name is Chris Foley. I'm a DevRel engineer with the Android Games Developer Relations team, and thank you for watching.